the middle classes with the middle brownism had and with their aspiration to cultivation as the no and the, the middle brow uh, anxiety is to be in the know not to absorb assimil assimilate but to be in the know to have acquaintance to be able to drop the right names or whatever the, the middle browism hadn't until after the war thought the avant-garde was worth assimilating or worth attacking worth absorbing worth infiltrating. And so I thought, I still think, that I and everybody else who looked and read and listened and so forth were witnessing, was witnessing a new phenomenon. The middle grounds finally had gotten hold of avant-garde culture. And James Joyce was being taught in freshman year lit courses in college my wife went to and so forth and all of that. And when I went to college and, uh, uh, and you took French, the professor had never heard of Rambo. And uh, and what Went on, I realized what went on in the 50s was this great invasion of art, the great attractive, the middle brows had felt the attractiveness of not only Bohemia, but, but of what looked like adventurous art. And that the hundreds and then thousands of painters and sculptors who'd come downtown or come in New York in the 50s. And I should have known at the time, they were all middle brows. Now, I hate to use the word middle brow. It's gotten, it's gotten used up, and it's another one of these damn labels, that, you know, a compromise. And it's, uh, I don't like the word high brow either. I don't like low brow, but uh, I'm, no, sub, no adequate uh, substitutes have come up. Uh, and so, it was really all this trending that's going on in the 60s. It was like middle brows pulling one on high brow culture. And as I said yesterday at St. Martin, some of you may have been there, the fact that things, art went over, new art went over so fast in the 60s uh, was a a sign of that to someone who couldn't see the art for himself. <coughs> since Corot's time, and certainly since Courbet's or Manet's time, strong new art doesn't go over fast. Its very strength builds resistance to it. The way uh, the speed of a projectile builds resistance in the atmosphere. I don't say this is, has always to be so. I mean, you can never predict when it comes to art. Maybe tomorrow somebody will go over, overnight who's really good, the art that's really strong. That might happen, but it hadn't happened within the last hundred odd years. It hadn't happened since Corot's time. The speed with which these trends catch on, that's enough, aside from that boringness to tell you that there's something hollow here, there's something superficial. And so I say, what's the state of art now? I say the state of art now is where the middle brows have captured the avant-garde. The word avant-garde is no longer loaded with the meaning it once had. Uh, the word advanced almost is no longer with the, loaded with the meaning that it once had. It, it become empty, useless words. Uh, 
useless mostly. It's not the it's, the language wears out of pace. Well, I guess language always wears out. Is it? Then, as a cultural historian, not as an art critic, I became aware of another one of the beautiful ironies of reality, of history, how things always turn around. Just at the very time when we all expected the new to come along in a shocking guise, as it had, let's say, with Pollock, even with David Smith, the validly new, the real new, I mean the genuinely new, began to come in on cat's feet to quote Carl Sandburg. The best new art was still easel painting, in my eyes. And the best new art is still sculpture making. And that irony is hard for the middle brow sensibility, middle brow mind to take in. Also, part of middle browism that it doesn't uh, it doesn't tolerate ironies. It doesn't tolerate uh, apparent contradictions or even or real ones. And life is shot through with ironies and contradictions. Logical ones, anyhow. And uh, so the best new law of the 60s and of the 70s has managed somehow to isolate itself into an old time avant garde position. This difference. Something has happened that's made it possible even for isolated new art to go over a little faster than it used to. Where it used to take, where it took Monet 10 years to go over, it took Pollock 10 years to go over, now a really good new artist goes over in five years, according to the record. And uh, I'll have to uh, <coughs> credit uh, the, mil the middle brows with their interest in art. And so I'll have to give them the credit for that. But all the same, and here, and this is art now in my eyes again, art today in my 